Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this Excel video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use some basic formatting options to more advanced ones, as well as 3D formulas. I've used some of these skills to help me score a perfect score on the Microsoft Office Special Exam in Excel, and I hope to share some of these skills with you guys in this video to help you either score really well on the exam or just learn a few new things about Excel. All right, so before we get started on cell formatting, if you want to follow along, the file for this uh, worksheet is located at this website here. I'll put the link in the description below this video, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, we have four worksheets, and we're going to group them. They all sort of look the same, and I'm going to show you at the end of this video what grouping worksheets can do and how it can save you time. So I'm going to click on the first worksheet, and if they were, if we're going to group all of the worksheets in this workbook, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then click the very last uh, worksheet with my mouse. And you'll notice that this is grouped because they're all, they all look highlighted. And you group worksheets if it says group here right beside the name of this file. So now that we've grouped the worksheet, we can just pick one worksheet to work with. And then any changes that we make to this worksheet will be applied to the other worksheets. So we're just going to make some simple font size changes in uh, step one asks us to change cell A1 to 22 points. So you do that, just navigate, click on A1 and then navigate in the ribbon to the font group. And I'm just going to increase the font size until I reach uh, 22 points. Okay, so ultimate rig is there, 22 points and the heading in cell A2 to 18 points, that's right below it. And I'm just going to increase the font size again until I reach 18 points. And that's it for step one. Now step two asks us to merge and center the first two headings across column A to G. So the first two headings, those are the ones we just changed. So I can't actually merge and center these at the same time. I have to do them separately. But this gives us an opportunity to look at the difference between merge and center and merge across. So I'm going to click in A1 and then hold my mouse until I reach G1 and then let go of my mouse and this is highlighted this range here and now I can press merge and center to complete the first part of task 2 and then I'll do the same thing but let's look, take a look at the difference between merge and center and merge across so if I say merge and center if I go to the drop arrow and then say merge across what happens was the text stays on the left side and but we still merged this area this is a microsoft office specialist skill that you'll need to know and you'll need to know the difference between merge and center and merge across but just like the task we'll make sure this is changed to merge and center so we so we'll take that last one off the merge off and then just apply it again so that the text goes into the center of our merge and that is it for step two so step three there's a bit of a trick it says merge and center the stores heading in row four across columns b and g but right now it's in column A. So if you ever want to move values or text in Excel, I just like to do this quickly. You can cut and paste, you can move. This is the way to move your values or text to a different cell. So if we want to just move this to the right, I'm going to grab the border of the cell and just click and hold my mouse and then just drag the information to uh, column B or B4, cell B4, and then just drop it there. And now we can merge and center from column B to G. So that's it for step three. Uh, step four is auto fit column A. So you see that some of these, um, the text in column A tends to go over, like in cell A7 here, the burger text is going over the column line. To fix that, instead of just pulling the uh, column A to a random spot, you can just double click in between A and B when my mouse looks like this, it looks like a wall that's pushing on either side, I can just double click. And another way to auto fit a column heading would be to go to the in the cells group in the home tab, click the drop arrow, and you can either auto fit row height or auto fit column width. So we just auto fit the column width. But if you want to do that quickly, you can just double click here again. And then now it's made the cell or sorry, the column A big enough so that all of the text fits within it. All right, that's, so that's it for, that's how you auto fit. Uh, display the column headings in row five in 14 points. So we're just gonna change the size again. 
to 14 points. Now we're going to change the column width of the columns B to G um, without doing auto fit this time. So another way to change the size of your columns or rows, and again I'm going to press um, column B, I'm going to select column B, and then hit uh, the shift key on my keyboard and select column G and it'll select everything in between. Just I'm going to change the column width to 15 points for all of these columns. And the way you can do that is to highlight them, go to the format drop arrow, and then pick a column width um, measurement. So choose column width, and then if I type in 15, that'll be uh, 15 points. Okay, so all columns are now 15 points, and you see the words uh, now fit inside of the, all of the columns. So that's it for step six. Now we're going to pick put a thick border around the range A5 to G12. So the range starts in A5 and ends in G12. And in the font group, we've got these border options. If I click the drop arrow, the thick outside borders is the one we're looking for. And it looks like that. So before we start step eight, let me explain the difference between font colors cell colors and cell styles. So um, if we wanted to change the store's heading, if we wanted to change the color, we can do that here in the font group. And you can kind of see it's the, uh, the box that drops down is blocking this a little bit. But you can see that the colors are changing if I hover my mouse over each one. Uh, if I do the cell color, this is the color in the background of that cell, but doesn't change the text color. So just know the difference between cell color versus text color. And then there's uh, cell styles that'll change the color of both of those things. So a lot of these styles will change um, the text color and the cell color. So we're asked to choose heading one from this uh, styles gallery. And there's a lot of good options in there. So now that's what that uh, heading one style would look like. And now we're going to change the cell colors in the total column and total row. So I'm going to highlight, if you want to highlight two areas of your Excel worksheet at the same time, highlight one and then press and hold control on your keyboard and then highlight the next. And now I can change the formatting of these two separate ranges. Um, and it's going to ask me for gold accent three, lighter 80%. That's in our cell co fill color. And gold accent three, lighter 80% is right here. And that's how you would um, change the color of a range of cells. So now I'm actually going to ungroup the four cell um, worksheets. So now you can see that all worksheets have the same formatting, which is great. So it saved us time instead of formatting each individually. And now I'm just going to group the January to March uh, worksheets to get the totals. So if you want to do that, just click on. So I'm on one of the worksheets and I've grouped from January, February, March grouped all those and now I can just click auto sum and auto sum these totals as well and you can see if we ch now if we check on we'll ungroup these so we'll click on the first one January February and March all have totals because they they were grouped okay so now we're going to ungroup so make sure you ungroup the worksheets by clicking on one of them and um, if you have one worksheet that's ungrouped, if you click on that one, it'll ungroup the rest of them. So, so now we're asked to use a 3D formula to calculate the numbers for this uh, first quarter summary worksheet. And basically what a 3D formula is, is just um, the same range in different worksheets. So you can see all of the worksheets uh, look very similar. It's the same range that we're going to use to calculate the totals or get, gather a summary from the three months, January, February, and March. So the first way to do that would be to, uh, in cell B6, is type equal, and then sum, and then open bracket. And now we want to group our worksheets from January to March. So I'm going to click January first, and then click on the shift key on my keyboard to collect March. And you see in the formula bar here, um, January to March is the worksheet range that we use, and we use cell B6 in all three of those worksheets. Okay, so B6 from all of, it's going to gather the value in B6 from all three worksheets. And then I close the bracket to end my formula, and once I press enter, 
it'll take us back to that first one. So this is the total um, for the three months of the Scarborough location. These are the hamburgers sold. And then the nice thing about this is because it's a the same range, I can just copy this formula using the fill handle. So I'm going to drag this little button on the right corner across all the way to totals. And then with this range highlighted, I'm going to drag all the way down to get all of my numbers. And you'll notice something funny happens here. The formatting disappears. So if you don't want that to change, if you don't want the, if you want the formatting to be like the other worksheets, um, there's autofill options drop arrow here. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to say, we're going to fill those cells without formatting or changing the formatting. Okay. And then I click that and the formatting should be the same. And if you run into a problem like this, um, you can always use the Format Painter. So I'm going to click the Format Painter, copy this format, and put it right there. And that's how you use the Format, or format Painter button. If you want to learn more about Excel, you can check out these videos here, and I'll have some new ones up very soon. Thanks for watching.